Good morning and welcome. Today we celebrate the Nativity of our Lord. Our celebrant today is Father Kevin. Our Mass is being offered for the intention of John and Marie Potosa. Please stand as we begin our Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone, and Merry Christmas. We gather on this Christmas morn aware of God's love for us, that he sent us his only begotten Son, born of Mary, born into the darkness of the world to bring us light, healing, and hope, born amidst a world in need of change. Today is no different. Today, the newborn Christ comes to our world, comes to our hearts to change us, to give us the healing that we need. We come to this Christmas liturgy aware of God's goodness to us, 
but also aware of the times in our lives that we have failed to live this Christmas mystery and become Christ for one another. So for those times, we pause in the presence of the newborn child to celebrate the great gift that he brings to us this Christmas morn, the gift of mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and still more wonderfully restored it, grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people making merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, 
and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. For every boot that trampled in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age, as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness, and to cleanse for himself a people of his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went out to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for him in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region, living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you who is Christ and Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. And certainly Christmas cards remind us of what the season's about, give us a special closeness to family and friends we haven't seen, an opportunity for us to reach out. When I was growing up, I was so inspired by my pastor, Father Burgoyne, and he was certainly the inspiration of my vocation on so many different levels and had such a great influence on my family. And eventually, as I entered the seminary and my family moved to the shore, I lived with Father Burgoyne in the rectory, and we became closer and closer as time went on, and he truly, to this day, inspires me. He would have been 95 on the 23rd of December, and I know that his spirit and his priesthood were a gift to me that I try to imitate in my life as a priest. But you know, one of the very special times was when I would come home from the seminary and be with him in the rectory for Christmas. And as Christmas was getting closer, he would become more and more excited about the celebration of Christmas, as all of us do. But one of the things that he treasured about Christmas was to receive cards. You may recognize his name, Burgoyne. He was a part of the Burgoyne family. He was the grandson of the founder of the Burgoyne Greeting Card Company, and his own father was the president of the company for many years. So Christmas cards were very, very special. They really were the best Christmas cards. Their display window in Wanamaker's was magnificent every year, and they were more expensive Christmas cards. I never got a discount on Burgoyne Christmas cards, but they really were beautiful. But one of the things that Father would do is he would really spend time looking at cards, and they would last all through January. He would really study them because he had such an influence on the business and what the cards look like, the messages on the inside, and he would bring them to the dinner table to talk about them. And they were beautiful, and some he liked, and some he would say he didn't like. But all of us enjoy this great tradition at Christmas time. And this year, I have to say, it's been a part of who I am always, but this year, Christmas cards have been very special, being able to send them out and also to receive them. I think part of it is 
the conditions we're living in, my own condition of 11 days being trapped in my room. I read every word. I even admitted this year I read some of the letters that people write. Some of those don't always get read. But this year I read most of them. And some of the cards really put you in the Christmas spirit. Beautiful images of the Blessed Mother holding the child Jesus. Some very, very ancient manuscripts that were put on the front of a Christmas card. So beautiful with the words that are the gospel of today. Older images from the Renaissance. Beautiful religious images and messages that certainly I will save and put in my Christmas box. Then some of you send Christmas cards that have a picture of the family that keep us up to date how people are getting older. My own family and friends, parishioners send these cards. You see who the most recent wedding was. You see who's been added to the family. A couple sonograms this year of who's expecting the new baby. Even the dog sometimes makes it on to the Christmas card. This one was particularly of interest. It was a way that the whole family was able to come together was to take a screenshot of one of their Zoom meetings. I thought that was really clever. But my all-time favorite of 2020 was a Christmas card I received that on the one side it has a picture of the family and a renovation of their home, but it was the other side that really gave me a, a reality check of life. It gave me a reality check that Christmas is real, and it's the Christmas card that made me laugh the most. And it was entitled, Our Family's Top 10 Quarantine Internet Searches. And they list them. I don't even know what this first one is, but it sounds fascinating. What is the best face-slimming masks? Can 15-year-olds give haircuts with no prior experience? Can I Zoom in my pajamas? Is self-quarantining from your own family allowed? What's an alternative to toilet paper? What's the best new shows on Netflix? Netflix. What's the best spotted lanternfly tape? Help. Teen driver gets license one week before shutdown. And the last one. Hand sanitizer that doesn't smell like a dead animal. That put me in a very good mood of laughter. It also reminded me that life is real. And life, the real life that we live, is the life that Christ was born into. Life on life's terms is the life that Christ wishes to touch this Christmas. We have been through so much, and it's only with the gift of laughter that reminds us that God is in the midst of this, that God is a part of any misery, any darkness, any worry, doubt, fear, anxiety that any of us have in these months that we carry in our lives. You know, there is a lot of heaviness but Christ came into the world to be with us so that we do not walk alone, that we are able to have him with us. And because of that, because he is with us, we are able to walk together. We're able to see a path. We're able to see the light. We're able even to laugh. Some of us have had trying years. People have lost loved ones. There's loved ones that are not with you today that were with you last year, maybe sitting right next to you. People have lost their jobs, financial worries, a divided nation, a divided church. The people that walks in darkness have seen a great light. We don't stay in the darkness. The darkness can be all around us like the other night, but the star was able to be seen. And we focus on the light and not the darkness. We focus on Christ and not the misery and worry of the world. This Christmas allows us a time to be born again. Our Advent days were filled with the hymn, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Well, today we come to adore him. O come, let us adore him, God who is with us and will never leave us. 
a God who's with us in the darkness, but gives us the light of himself. He burns brightly by burning himself so that we might see the path. There are many Christmas hymns that make us laugh, Christmas hymns that make us cry. Many of them are about the night, about how silent the night was when Christ was born. Oh, holy night is a favorite. But in particular this year, those words in the song lift our spirits to remind us that a weary world rejoices. Joy fills our hearts this Christmas in the midst of everything because of one thing, one person, God, God who is with us. Let us not be distracted by the darkness, but let us look to the light on this holy day and in the holy nights of our lives. It's the star of Christ, the light of Christ that helps all of us, weary, worn, and broken at times, to rejoice. Today, Christ is born. God is with us. And so, a weary world truly rejoices. With joy in our hearts, let us profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, born of Mary, so that we might walk in the light. And so we come before the Lord to offer these our prayers. For Pope Francis, may God continue to bless him with vitality as he shepherds his flock, the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For legislators and policymakers, may the Lord guide their decision-making in order to protect the lives of the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who feel lonely this Christmas, may Jesus bring them comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families gathered today, as we seek to emulate the model of the Holy Family of Nazareth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, especially John and Marie Potosa, who for whom this Mass is offered, may they rejoice in heaven with the risen Christ and all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, source of every blessing in our lives, you gave us your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, born of Mary. We ask that you hear these prayers we make with humble hearts through Christ our Lord. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation on this solemn day when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that, 
As we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My friends, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper 
of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that just as the Savior of the world born this day is the author of divine generation for us, so he may be the giver even of immortality who lives and reigns forever and ever. There's a tremendous amount of gratitude that fills my heart today for all the people that have helped to make our Christmas celebration this year uniquely different, but nonetheless beautiful. I'm very grateful for our pastoral staff that has worked so hard over these weeks to prepare for all of the communications, all that we were able to share over these weeks preparing for Christmas. I'm very grateful to Maureen Collins and her sisters and family who so beautifully decorate our church, and our home each Christmas. I'm especially grateful for Rich and Michelle, who have, over these last 10 months, provided us with such liturgical support in the beauty of their voices and the instruments that they play and all of our liturgical ministers, but especially to Rich and Michelle for all that they've done on this Christmas. So. (laughs) 
I was thinking last night after supper that next Christmas will be very different. I don't know if we'll be able to have you here all morning. Rich will have to be. You know, Rich is downstairs. Rich will have to be here. So I'm making that public now. <laughs> he can't say anything back. He's downstairs. But certainly next Christmas will be very different for you and Rich. But we're so grateful for all that you do. On behalf of Monsignor Trinity, Father Jim, our deacons, the sisters, all of our pastoral staff, I wish you a very, very blessed and Merry Christmas with you and your families. United in the body of Christ, we celebrate the light that only Christ can give. We do not celebrate what's been taken away, but He, He who has been given to us. For a weary world truly rejoices today in the birth of Christ. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of the newborn Christ. Thank you.